we go. You did, good. That's four submersible pumps, switches. Gives us 250 gallons a minute. And now he's turned on the Nesco bowl. Now he's turning on the water for the jig. the water pressure on that. Now he's going to switch for the nutriator pump. It's fed by the... the other uh, jig pipe fill up. Okay. If the jig pipe fill up, then he'll fire off a switch to the jig and he'll be running. The Nesco is running right now, Mike? Nesco's running. The high G. So we're at 30 psi. We'll turn up to 31. That's what it's supposed to be. We'll put it at 32 because we haven't turned okay. anything on yet. 32 it'll be. 32 and a little bit. Okay, perfect. So we're just and then we got the nest pole right here. It's running. And the way this all works is. The material comes in that pipe, into the jig. The jig ponds go down into the illustrator pump. It's hooked up to that red hole and dumped into the high G. The ponds from there stay in there. The bass machine, the tails from that machine go into another centrifuge. There's no the Nepco bowl. The tails from that one go out to a fruit. And the tails from the jig go out to a fruit. There's the jig bed running. Here comes the material feeding across the jig now. The bulk over here goes across the jig. And the tailings from that going to that drain pipe as well as side to a flute. Concentrate from the jig, drop in the hutches right there. Fell through those two pipes into the illustrator pump. So you can see the ones running real black at the concentrate from the first hutch, catching it all. Definitely just catching. Illustrator pump pump set up through the red pipe. Up the red pipe into the high G bowl. The high G is running at 31 psi on the money. Concentrate stay in this, this is the batch machine. The tailings draw this drop, the net bowl. And at the back machine also just places the high G. And it goes tail from it to outside around the two boxes right now. There's my two sluices. The one is on the left is from the Nepco bowl. The one on the right is the concentrates from the jig. So we take any microscopic specks that might escape, we'll be caught in the sluices and then we'll rerun that material. Once the shutdown is complete after cleanup, we pull the concentrate from the high G and the Nesco, and the two concentrates from that will equal less than a half of a five gallon bucket. And that is then placed in this five deck squaco screen. And it's sorted out by five sizes in the different various buckets. And then we take the various sizes. The coarser fractions being from 8, 10, 12, 14 on this wheel, the final separation. And 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100 on the Gemini, the final separation. And this will be run after he's done screening. This will be later this afternoon. It takes about four hours to do a complete cleanup. The bucket stand. It's all in the van or beneath some lines, electric heat, lots of light. Plumbing, two inch lines, four inch coming in the building for a good flow.
This is a PMX rotary table. It's 42 inches in diameter. We use this in the cleanup system for fraction sizes from 14 screen through 6 screen. This is a Gemini mid-size table. Everything above uh, smaller than 14 screen, like 20 screen to 400 mesh, is recovered clean with this unit. This is a drying pan of gold after one day's run and one cleanup. Probably 100 ounces, approximately. This is the bottom of the vac truck after we're washing out the concentrate. And it gets quite concentrated just at the last before it goes out. And this represents the same gold you saw on the drying pan. And this represents about 2,500 ounces of gold, approximately one month's recovery. And it's varying in sizes from coarse on to ultra fine. This is packed in the jars ready for shipment to the refinery. We usually take gold to the refinery approximately once a month from the mining operation. Thank you.